I am Jennifer Cabahug. I pass NC2 training. I am certified NC2 holder. Philippines Call Center Institute. Computer servicing NC2. Poultry chicken NC2. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you about the experience you've been through um, from this uh, training and also to your assessment. Um, and also, um, can you please give me some background of what you call that uh, agricultural crops production? Um, I just want to know what's the uh, what kind of, of training is that? My name is Adonis from Australia. I took agricultural crops production at C2 at Regional Training Center, Testa, Tabuluan. Um, agricultural crops production at C2 is very different from um, taking Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. It is different because uh, Bachelor of Science in Agriculture is you need to um, took that course like four years, while agricultural crops production at C2 was need to took that qualification um, for three months. So it's way different because it's more of like learning. Um, written and then um, you need to learn prep. That means it's hands-on activities. My experience during training is actually uh, same from your, you are learning something, you're, educate some, you're educating yourself with something, a knowledge that you need to like um, learning through written or write, writing okay. and then verbal and then also you need to hand, have a hands-on activity so that mm -hmm. you need to apply, for, uh, apply that learning through actions. Um, during assessment is you know, uh, after you learn something, uh, written, there are three, uh, two types rather, um, during assessment. It's writing, it's, it's reading exam, and the other one was a hands-on activity. So we are literally um, a farmer. We are calling ourselves a farmer because you are having a hands-on activity. So you need to land prep, you need to mark up, you need to propagate, you need to, like, um, in, in, when it comes to reading, you need to identify. And also, I forgot, we um, also have a verbal... Um, Exam. So you need to answer all those questions um, regarding farming, regarding the the um, what's it about? You need to undergo three types uh, of exam, which is uh, the first one is written, the other the second one was hands-on activity, and then the third one was verbal exam. Because in order for us to you know in order for the assessor to know that you are really equipped, competent, and um, we call it competent. Uh, once you pass exam, you are called you are called as a agricultural crops production and seed holder who are competent okay. and during that assessment it's really um you know we can call it a, a brain draining because we need to like from that previous um knowledge um from, from previous months we need to recall it and then act um so like it's the same from uh, taking a an exam a political exam or an entrance exam okay. but it's very challenging because you know far from um a graduate of um, standard education or english and then shifting to agriculture but it's really timely relevant here in the philippines the agriculture um and, and agriculture course is not so like it's not really popular from gen z's or um gen z's who took like they are taking a course that is really you know um not, uh, popular for th they think that it's popular in the Philippines, but it's not. So agriculture is is a, a, a take risk, taking risk to take to talk that as qualification RTC Okay. What are those pros and cons, sir? Since that you've been through all those, I mean, you've been. I mean, you are you pass the assessment. Um, since that you are NC2 holder now, so what are those pros and cons? When you uh took a certain qualification and then you undergo an assessment it's very an advantage because um the assessor is going to assess that you did you learn something um after that assessment after that three months um training are you equipped to to practice agricultural crops production in real scenarios and also um the difference between you are the mere different also from like you never undergone an assessment it's like how would everybody know that you are equipped, you are competent for agricultural crops production NC2. It's like merely you are graduating from a four year course. You are a graduate because you are equipped, you are competent, you are globally competent. And everyone would say that you are going to do something. Your craft, your, the talent, and the knowledge that you um, acquire during that four year course or a certain qualifications. Okay, thank you so much for your interview. I hope you pass. Thank you, thank you, sir, so much for your time. Technology House, Southern Philippines. Hello, I am Elmer Gamstaya. I am 26 year old. And I am fresh graduate of USC Philippine Weber, taking Bachelor of Science in Technology Communications Management. I am certified an NC2 hair dressing and hair and makeup artist. Throughout my training, I gained more experiences in various hair dressing techniques, such as styling, cutting, and as well as makeup application in different occasions. Completing my assessment marked the culmination of my training, where I demonstrated the proficiency and readiness to provide high-quality services in the beauty industry. 
What are the pros? Since that that you already have the DOT certificate, I mean you passed DOT the assessment. In pros, first is, you must be versatile skill set. You have a wide range set. So it means that you must be quick in both, such as hairdressing and makeup industry. Second is high demand. The demand of makeup industry, especially beauty industry, is very high. So especially that nowadays, as there's also makeup artists who don't mind the fees, especially to the non-professional makeup artists. So they are uh, lowing or having cheap uh, cost of pricing in the makeup industry. So especially that it is what we call high demand. So you must be also um, equipped to have this kind of makeup industry in terms of providing the high quality of makeup, especially that generations is by generations. But lastly, in process, shop satisfaction, you must be secured. Your customers must be satisfied. Your work, especially, of course, that there are many competitors in terms of makeup industry and hairdressing. So you must be also quick and professional in terms of your job description. What are the cons? First is physical demands. This job requires long hours of standing. So you must be prepared because you cannot, because what we called is there is no an easy money. So you must be patient in terms of this kind of beauty industry. Second is client expectations. So whether you like it or not, especially that if you are known as a makeup artist or being recommended by many, so the expectations of the client must be typical 101%. So you must be careful in what you are doing, especially that your client is expecting you because you are being recommended by your friends of friends or family friend. And lastly is irregular income. We cannot deny the fact that this kind of uh, job description is okay, not every day. So your your income is inconsistent. So it means that you cannot rely on this only job. So you must find another job so that you can have this regular income. That's all. Thank you also University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines. Sawadee Thanks for watching.